to the Anyone Can Learn to Code screencast series. In today's episode, we'll introduce you to the command line terminal. In this screencast, we'll cover the terminal on a Mac. If you have a PC, I have made a separate screencast for you, which can be found on my website in the same post together with the screencast. The reason we are talking about the terminal today is because we are gearing up to create our first Ruby program. But to do so, we must first familiarize ourselves with the terminal, which is one of the most fundamental tools used in programming. In our case, we'll run our Ruby programs from the terminal, which is why the terminal will be so crucial to this screencast series. Note that the terminal is not Ruby specific at all, but it is an important tool we'll be using to create and run our Ruby programs. First, I'll show you how to access the terminal. There are several ways to get there, but here's the most basic way. Open up your finder, and on the side here, you should have various sections you can go to. Go to Applications, which usually holds your various programs and applications. And within there, you'll notice a folder right here called Utilities. Double click on that. Within Utilities are even more, more programs, but right here is your terminal. Now you can double click on this. I'd recommend that you actually drag and drop this into your dock, which I've already done, for easy access at any later point. But we can just go ahead and double click on that. And this my friends, is the terminal. Okay, so it looks sort of hackerish, but what is it? The terminal is a way of communicating with your operating system by typing in commands. If you've never used terminal before, that's because you interact with your operating system by clicking on icons and using Finder, like we just did, to navigate between various folders and files. But you can do the same thing and more using terminal. Let's learn the most basic and important commands of terminal that you'll need to know. At the same time, we're going to keep Finder up here on the side so we can compare what we're doing in Terminal to the equivalent of what you would do in Finder. Right now, in Terminal, you can see over here that we are in the jwengro folder, which is the equivalent of being in this jwengro folder right here in Finder. So being here says we're right here. Now, if on the Finder, you can see that there are various folders within the jwengro folder, including the Documents folder. Let's say we wanted to access the Documents folder from our terminal. So we type in cd, which happens to stand for Change Directory, Documents. And now we are in the Documents folder. It doesn't look like we're in anything, but the one indicator we have over here is that right here it says Documents. That means Terminal is now based within and is navigating within the Documents folder. Now, to back out of this directory and go back to the jwengro folder, or whatever your username is, we would do cd space dot dot. And we're not going to explain this right now exactly, but just take it as it is, and now we're back in the jwengro folder. So in Finder, I would just click on, oh, we're already there. This would be if I went to Documents, and now I'm back at jwengro, which is what we just did in the terminal. Now, let's see what's in the current directory, in this case, the jwengro directory, the home directory, by typing in ls. That's the special terminal command on a Mac that lets you see all the contents of your directory that you're in. And here you see all these sorts of things, Adobe Photoshop, Applications, Desktop, Documents, Downloads, which you'll notice are the very same things that you see here in Finder. That's because Terminal is doing the same thing that Finder is doing. You're in a directory and viewing its contents. Now, let's go inside of a directory that's within a directory. First, let's do it in Finder. Let's go back to Documents. So now we're in the Documents folder, and here is a convenient example folder, which I will double click in. And now we're in a directory within a directory. We're in the example directory that was within the Documents directory. So to do that in Terminal, there's a number of ways. Let me just show you the very most basic way. CD Documents, like we did before. So now the terminal is based within the Documents folder, and now let's do CD Examples to get within the next folder. I'm sorry, it's called Example. 
And now, well, that's good that we just saw that because now you can see what happens if you type something that's incorrect. It tells you there is no such directory called examples. But there is one called example and that worked. And now you see right here in the terminal that we are within the example directory. Let's see what's within the example directory. In Finder you can see we're in there and there's two files in here. One called hello.txt and one called random file. Neither of them have anything in them. But let's do the same in the terminal. And if you'll recall, the command again is ls, and you see those very two files, hello.txt and random file. Now let's practice backing up back to our home directory. So if you recall, cd dot dot brings you one step back. Now we're back in documents. So here we're back in documents. And now let's back up one more time, and now we're back in the jwengro folder, which that didn't work, but this does. Now we're back in the jwengro folder. Okay, now let's practice jumping to the example directory from the home directory in one shot. You can do it by cd documents slash example and boom, we are straight in the example directory. In Finder you have to do it in two steps, but in Terminal you can do it in one step. Likewise, you can jump back from the example directory to the root directory in one step. You can do cd dot dot slash dot dot boom or in jwengro. For the record, you can also do cd squiggly line, which will also bring you back to the root, not to the root, but to the home folder. And you can be anywhere within any folder in the terminal and that's something really cool, a CD squiggly line, which brings you automatically back to your home folder, which in my case is jwengro because I am the user. Okay, awesome. Now you know the very basics of using the terminal. Whatever else you'll need to know will cover in the episodes in which you'll need to know them. But let's do one final step to prepare for the next episode. And we are going to make sure that we have Ruby and an editor, a text editor installed. To install Ruby, I'd recommend that you use Rails Installer. It's true that most Macs already have Ruby installed on it, but using Rails Installer will give you lots of good extra stuff that you may need down the road anyway. So let me just show you. To go to Rails, to get to Rails Installer, you have to go to railsinstaller.org. <laughs> and here's Rails Installer. Right now there's this huge button, download the kit. You're going to click on that, and there's this awesome video right here. You click on it. You only have to watch the first minute and 25 seconds of it. It will walk you through the installation, which is really easy anyway. You can do that first, and then you can click the green button and follow the directions as explained in the video. Incidentally, Rails Installer works for both Mac and Windows, which is really cool. But yes, I know this is the Mac version of the screencast, but I just had to say that. Rails Installer is awesome. Okay, I have already installed Ruby and Rails and everything else, that all the goodies that Rails Installer gives us. Now, you need a text editor. Basically, a text editor is something you use to open up a file, enter text, and save it. Sort of like Microsoft Word, but unfortunately Microsoft Word is not going to work with Ruby. You need a, more, a simpler text editor. So, there's actually a couple of options that you have, especially on a Mac. A Mac you have many good options. Uh, many of the good options cost money. The one I use professionally is Sublime Text, which you can get to if you go to sublimetext.com and you could download it. There's a trial for 30 days, but then you have to pay for it. I'm going to assume that most of you, since you're just starting out, you'd probably opt to go for a free text editor. So Here's one that we're going to use. It's called Redcar. And you can go to the website, but you don't need to go to the website to install it. Here's another cool thing you could do with Terminal. In order to inst once you have Ruby installed using Rails Installer, all you have to do at that point is type in gem install Redcar. Now first, navigate to the folder that you want to install that text editor in. I may want it in my home folder, 
but if you want it in a different folder, go to the other folder using the CD tricks that I taught you, and then type in gem install redcar. And that will install this awesome text editor called redcar. Let's just go to the website. The website is called redcareditor.com. But to install it, all you have to do is type in gem install redcar as I explained. You'd probably have to wait a few minutes until the installation is complete, but once you install it, you can just type redcar in the terminal to open redcar. And it spits out all that interesting gobbledygook, and then redcar pops up. And here's redcar. And you can open a new file, enter some text, it's freezing on me. There we go, we got text, awesome text. This is another computer language, not Ruby. I'm not gonna tell you what it's called. And then you can save it, etc. It's pretty simple. It's like Microsoft Word, but much, much simpler. No frills. But it's gonna be awesome for writing Ruby programs. Okay. Now we should have all the necessary tools to write our very first Ruby program. And we're going to do that in the next episode. So stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching. Anyone can learn to code screencast series.